Hi, y'all. Welcome back to the Knit and Sit podcast. I'm Kate, and today we are talking about some fibers, different fibers that we're going to be working with this year. In my previous podcasts, I think I showed you some of the yarns, just a little bit of a preview of for all of the different projects, the 12 months of beginner knit and sit projects, but I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into fibers today and also into a few tools that are going to be helpful as you get started on your knitting journey. So I will be showing you some of the different yarn brands and I'm also wearing the 30s Snood. So this is what we're going to be starting for our January project and I'll do an extended podcast this weekend talking all about the 30s snood and giving you some tips and tricks for doing the project so I hope you're joining us in knitting this and getting started in our 12 months of beginner knitting let's dive into the best part of knitting or one of the best parts to me which is the fibers so our first one that we'll, we'll be working with after, I should say, our second one really. In February, we'll be working with this, which is the Knit Collage. It's a jumbo yarn and it is merino wool um, with some other fun stuff in it. You can see there's some little sparkly strands, so different stuff like that in it too, but it is a wool and it's, like I said, a jumbo weight yarn. And this is what a lot of people are going to call an art yarn. So it has different weights almost and in, in it it's just it, the way it's plied it's plied a little bit differently it's not plied completely evenly to make a really evenly you know an, an even yarn something like this which we'll talk about later um so this has you know big spots and little spots and that does make it a little bit interesting to knit with and so that will be a challenge for you guys as you go through this pro the february project which is the home stretch hat because it is just, yeah, it's a little bit different when you're looking at, oh, hey, I've just knit a really, really chunky piece, and then I'm about to knit a thinner piece. So the way that this is plied is just a little bit different, and it's more of an art yarn, and it's fun to work with. It gives, you know, your knit good a really fun look. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to show you a jumbo weight yarn, and we'll be going through yarns by weight. So this is jumbo. And the next yarn weight we'll be talking about is super bulky. So this is Loopy Mango. This is super bulky. And a super bulky is what we're using for the 30 snood. So we're, this is Mono Stel Uruguay, their Franca base, and that's super bulky. But I'm just showing you a nice other, other option too. So Loopy Mango is super bulky. This is their tweed yarn. It is really, really fun. I've seen some tweeds from other companies and made with some tweeds from other companies in like this kind of black and colorful, you know, um, base colorway that they've done. And I have to say that I love Loopy Mangoes because it is so vibrant. Like some of the other ones that I have used are a little bit more muted, which is great. But I look at the things that I've made from that. And then I look at this and think, oh, this is really cool. Like this just pops and it's a gorgeous yarn. So super, super bulky weight versus our jumbo. And this is plied evenly so that this is not an art yarn. This is all plied. It's a single ply um, and it's done, you know, just evenly. So it won't give the maybe the same kind of textured look from, from that, but it will give a textured look, of course, from the different little bits of yarn and colors that are, are in it. So we've looked at Jumbo, we've looked at Super Bulky, and now we're gonna look at a bulky weight. So this is Bo Boleros, I love her her stuff. I love her colorways and her yarn. And so you can see a little bit thinner than our super bulky. So this is a bulky weight yarn. And one thing that I will say about different weights of yarn, so you'll get used to what your favorite weight is to knit with. My favorite personally is a worsted weight yarn, but I've worked with all kinds of different, you know, bases and different weights of yarn. So this is her, her Rita Chunky base, if you want to look at that. One thing that we're going to learn with our yarns is 
with the different weights, you're going to use different size needles to knit with them. So when you're knitting with like a jumbo weight yarn, sometimes even a super bulky, you might use like a size 19 or 17 needles. And so think about as the yarns get smaller, our needle sizes will get smaller too. And there's usually kind of a general range of needle sizes that we're going to work with. And the great thing about the 12 months of knit and sit projects is that I will be providing you with the needles so you don't have, it takes the guesswork out of it. You don't have to either know how to read the pattern or if you are trying to make up your own pattern, you don't have to kind of guess what size needles you're going to be working with. I'll be sending those in your kit. And so that it's just an easy, you know, open your kit, get started, takes the guesswork out of all of it. The other thing I want to point out about yarns is that something like this, a hank of yarn, you can't knit from this, but you can knit from a ball of yarn or a skein or a cake. There's lots of different, I won't get into, I won't go down the rabbit hole on all the different terminologies, but if you are ordering a kit from me and you want to make sure that your yarn is either caked or skeined, however you want to put it, just please um, put that in the comments when you order and I will make sure to send you something that you can knit straight from instead of something that you're going to have to wind on your own. So winding a jumbo weight yarn is not a big deal, but you do not really have to want to wind a fingering weight yarn by yourself. It's not really that fun. Although I will say some people it's part of their process and that's awesome. And some people don't want to wind until right before they make it. Um, you know, really purists, like very perfectionist knitters will do that. And that's awesome too. If that's your method, that's great. Um, I just basically want to pick something up and be able to start be able to start working with it. So that's my preference and just make sure to leave that in the comments if you're ordering. Okay, so we've looked at jumbo, super bulky, bulky, and then we've delved a little bit into needles and what you can knit from and what you can't. So this is an Aran weight yarn. So one down from a bulky weight. And I'm gonna show you these two together because they're similar weights. So we have an Aran and a worsted. You can tell that the Aran is a little bit thicker than the worsted, um, but a lot of times people will use them interchangeably. Be careful on a, like a sweater if you do that, but for most of the projects we're doing, that's completely fine. So um, those are some similar weights right down from the bulky. You've got the Aran weight and the worsted weight, which like I said, worsted is my very favorite weight of yarn to work with. So I'm also showing you some different brands today. We've seen some knit collage, some loopy mango, bow boleros. Here's some great knitting for olives, some Madeline Tosh. So you guys can look up all those brands on my website. I carry them all in the store. So you can kind of look at the different price points. And part of the 12 months of beginner projects is getting to experience different brands. So whereas a lot of kits that you might order is one company giving you their different bases and their different colorways, which is great. Like those are really good offerings. The one of the differences with my kits, other than that, it comes with a pattern and things like that, you know, a specific project with a purpose for learning. That's one big difference. The other big difference is that because I am a yarn store, I carry lots of different brands of yarn. And so you're getting to experience different fibers, different brands, everything that we We've looked at so far has been a merino wool and different you know from different places and you can look at that on the labels i do want to say that knitting for olive is one of my very favorite brands to carry because they are certified as being very safe very ethical they're a sustainable you know company and that is something i value a lot so with slow fashion with making that's one big reason why i got into it is because i wanted you know to support a more sustainable source of fashion and one thing that you'll see I'm going to just go off on a little tangent before we get into looking at some of our alpaca, which we'll look at next. 
So you'll hear a lot from knitters or crocheters from fiber artists about when they just start, they want to work with, you know, a more, a more acrylic based yarn, um, because it's a little bit less expensive. Although when you look at this, I mean, this knitting for all of Erin yarn, this is $10. So it's not going to break any kind of a budget there. And there are, you know, all wool yarns that will do that too. And if you, if, you want to go, you know, and get an acrylic yarn, that's great. That's where you want to start. That fits in your budget. That works for you. Then that's fantastic. I personally don't love to work with acrylic yarns for the big reason that, or a couple of big reasons. One, they're not as sustainable, so they aren't going to break down in a landfill the same way that a natural fiber would. So a cotton, a bamboo, a linen, a wool, you know, are natural fibers and they will biodegrade. They will break down. The acrylic will not do that so much. And, you know, second of all, there is, you know, some talk about the flammability of acrylic. And so particularly, like if I'm making a baby blanket, I will stay away from that. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll only make with acrylic for baby blankets because it's more washable. And yes, that's real. I have two kids. I totally get that. But at the same time, um, again, a little bit potentially more flammable and if you're making for a baby who's going to put something in their mouth I much prefer like and I'm not going to probably say this right but the Oko Tech certified you know the safe dyes the you know natural fibers versus something synthetic so that is my personal preference and you do you I just wanted to throw that out there as far as you know what motivates me and some things that I like and the preferences that I go toward so but like I said, whatever, you know, how, whatever gets you making, whatever you choose to make with is great because you're making, and that's the whole part, point of this. The point of this is not necessarily the yarn. It's the mindfulness and, you know, the peace of mind, uh, and the healthy habits of making of fiber arts and knitting. So that's just what I, what I wanted to share. And so we, oh, before we get into that next weight of yarn, I wanted to show you, this is an alpaca base. So it's plied a little bit differently, which might give it a little bit of a different look than something like this, but these are both worsted weight yarns. And I just wanted to show you a little bit about different fibers. So we've looked at a lot of wools. This is um, a wool and alpaca mix and I love working with it. It is a little bit of a different feel than wool, um, a little bit softer. It's also about 20% warmer on average than wool. So a little bit of myth busting about wool is that it gets a bad rap. Like you can only wear it in, you know, the winter because it's so warm and that's not necessarily true. Wool is actually temperature regulating, not temperature insulating. However, when you go into different bases like an alpaca, that's when you get into, you know, things that are a little bit maybe warmer and you might not want to wear alpaca as much in the summer if it's hot where you live. So that's just a little bit of a tip about different fibers. And I'll be giving tips like that through the rest of the podcast as we make with different things. I love to share any of the knowledge that I've learned to share that with you so you can learn as well. There's a great book out there called Yarn a Texture, and I think you can just even get it on Amazon, and it tells you a lot about different fibers, different dyes, and things like that. So if you're looking to dive really deep into the hobby, that is something you might want to check out. I learned a lot from that book, and you know, just different sources. There's lots of sources everywhere that you can pull from. So we've looked at a jumbo weight, a super bulky, a bulky, an Aran weight, we've looked at worsted weights, and now we're going to look at a DK weight yarn, which is another really versatile weight of yarn. I think, like I said, worsted and probably going into DK are some of my favorite yarn weights to work with because I feel like they make up a little bit faster than maybe a fingering weight does, but they don't have the bulky look. They have maybe a very smooth look to their stitches. And this is a cool type of yarn. I pronounce it boucle. If you pronounce it another way, that's great. Uh, 
please let me know if I'm wrong or if there's another way to say it. I, I was just having this discussion earlier, but this is a boucle yarn. This is the Fiber Genie. And so you can see how neat and textured that is. We'll be doing a project with boucle, our scrunchy project this year. So again, I want to expose you guys to lots of different bases, lots of different, you know, colorways and dyers, um, because it's really fun to learn about all of the different dyers and yarn companies that are out there. And I really love all of the dyers and yarn companies that I work with. And so I want to share those with you guys. And this is a really fun one. This is called a yarn cake. And so I have something in the shop called the caker and <laughs> it cakes up your yarn for you. So it looks delicious. I know. And you can knit straight from this. So that's our DK weight yarn. This is a local dyer to Kentucky. She's in Lancaster and I love her work. This is, I know you can't really feel it through here, but this is a really, really soft, beautiful wool. So she has a farm and she shears her sheep, spins the yarn herself and then dyes it with flowers from her garden. She makes me feel like I don't do anything at all. I think it's absolutely amazing what she does. And so you can see, I'm gonna try to show you, you know, how thin a fingering weight yarn really is. So, you know, very different from our bulkies, our super bulkies, our air and weights, um, and a very beautiful, you know, we'll give you a very beautiful, very tight stitch in the end. And showing you a couple different fibers then we'll look at some lace weight yarn in a minute so I do want to show you this it, it's a fingering weight so similar to what we just looked at this is a silk base from Knitting for Olive and it is here again so this is actually a hundred percent barrette silk and so it is a different method of making silk and a uh, you know, more humane way to make it. And so I love the knitting for all of pure silk. It is absolutely just wonderful to work with and gives you a gorgeous finished object. So it's a fingering weight. And I did want to show you that as, you know, you can tell that the silk is just a little bit of a different, you know, look than your wool. So a little, maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit shinier. So I wanted to show you that. And then a lace weight yarn. So I love mohair. I think I mentioned that I have a little bit of a mohair problem. I want to put mohair with everything to change the color of it because I think it looks beautiful put together. And so this is our, you know, cruelty free mohair from Knitting for Olive. And I love it. It is very, very, very thin. You can see that. And so a lot of times what you're going to do with a mohair would be to hold it with something else because it is, you know, that this would be as a lace weight, a little bit tricky to work with on its own. So a lot of people as beginners will start with more of like a bulky or a worsted weight yarn because it's a little bit easier to see the stitches on the needles to make sure that you're not accidentally missing a stitch. And so those are great weights to start with and just work your way through all the weights. See what clicks with you. See what you like. Different people like different needles too. I've heard, you know, some people say that size 17 needles, like what you might be working with for like a jumbo or a super bulky, that those are fumbly to work with. But working with, you know, a size two needle for a lace or a fingering weight is going to be very small on your fingers. So you'll get used to what you like and what clicks with you. And I wanted to show you a few tools that might be helpful for you guys to get as we start. So for the most part, so for in your kits, if we need a darning needle, which we will for every project because you weave in ends, I will send that to you. So don't worry about that. But, you know, hopefully at home you have scissors or I like these yarn snips. I like cocoa knits a lot. Yarn snips are a really nice thing to have. Or like I said, really any kind of scissor is something you can use to cut yarn. Fun fact is some yarn actually breaks. So you will you might see or hear in a pattern break the yarn. And that really confused me at first. I was like, what are you talking about? I don't want to break my yarn. But I guess that the ends sometimes weave in a little bit better and stay a little bit more if you do 
kind of break the yarn. Not all yarn will do that, but some will. So if you see that in a pattern, don't get confused. Another great tool to have is this. So this is multiple things in one. It's to measure gauge, which we're not going to worry about as much as beginners. We will learn that as we go and I will show you how to measure that, but we're not going to worry a ton about it because most of what we're doing is not going to be dependent on gauge. The other piece of this, so a lot of times I'll hear, oh, you know, my grandma gifted me all of these needles that she used to have or a friend did, but I don't know what size needles I have. Like I have all these needles and I have no idea what size they are, which you do need to know that. So that's actually important. And so you can see here that this is how you're going to measure needles. So you stick the needle through the hole and you know, the one that fits kind of snugly through, that is the size that it will be. So this is very, very helpful. And then one of the things I love the most about this is I love wraps per inch so much. So wraps per inch are for where you have a yarn that you maybe don't know whether it's jumbo, super bulky, etc. So we went through all of these today. So I showed you different yarns and all of these weights. And if you, for some reason, didn't save the little, you know, tag for your yarn, which is a great thing to save, try to do that if you can. But, you know, if you didn't save it and then you're, you end up with a little bit of extra yarn and you say, I have no idea what weight this is, you can wrap the yarn and see how many wraps are in an inch and then that will tell you roughly what the weight is so that helps a lot that's a really helpful tool to have i also use that for you know if somebody is holding yarns together or something and we want to see if we think it's going to change the gauge for them a lot this is a good starting point you know is it you know is adding a lace weight yarn going to add much to it usually the answer is no but if it's a really specific gauge we might take a look especially if you're holding it with a fingering weight yarn we might take a look at that so those are some tools and the other tool that might be helpful for you to have, although mostly you won't need it for the projects we're doing, but just a basic measuring tape. And so the tool I just showed you had some measurements on it too, and that's fine. You might have a ruler or, you know, a general measuring tape at home and that's great. You don't need a knitting specific one. It's just, if you have a small one, it can be nice to put in your knitting bag and carry around with you for if and when you do need that. So those are a couple of the tools that we, you know, that you might consider as you start your knitting journey this year. And I hope that you are getting excited to get started. If you haven't already ordered your beginner kit for January, please do. And then follow along on the podcast this weekend where I will talk through the project a little bit more. And hopefully I'll also next week be able to upload some photos from our in-person knit and sip, which will be on January 7th. So if you're in the Louisville, Kentucky, area and you want to come and meet a great group of knitters and fiber artists then come to our knit and sip the details are on my website so I'll put that link in the description and happy making cheers y'all